Didn't we just do this in the last video? <laughs> Deja vu, man. Hey, what's up, YouTube land? MGo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the fans' toys, Sever! So here we are, and there he is, and, well, since this is a test shot, I don't have any actual official packaging, but here is the shipping box. It came in. Yay! Freight. So there you go. There you have that. And moving right along... Here we have Sever. This is Fans Toys' take on a masterpiece, Snarl. Uh, the next piece in their line of uh, not masterpiece Dinobots. And um, very, very cool figure. Now keep in mind, this is a test shot, so things will be tweaked. Uh, you know, when the final product comes out. But um, as far as I'm concerned, I think this thing is ready to go. I mean, uh, when I got the initial email... Um, Henry was like, oh, it has some issues, but, you know, it'll all be fixed in the final, the final version. I honestly don't really see any issues with this at all as I was messing with it. Um, the only real issue is just, you know, maybe his tail back here kind of doesn't like to hold together too well. But other than that, it seems like this is pretty well ready to go. I didn't really see any issues for the most part. I mean, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so here is their... Not Snarl, and as you can see, he is a big Stegosaurus, and big he is, I mean, he's got some heft to him, very, very nicely done, very cool, lots of gold chrome on him, as you can see, very shiny, and me likes the shiny. Getting closer on the head sculpt, you can see, very nice head sculpt, even got some nice teeth there, nice blue eyes, um, there will be additional parts included to give him uh, red eyes instead of blue. I did not get those parts, but there will be additional parts if you want him to have red eyes. You will have the option of swapping them out. So just know that when you get the final product. But again, you do have a little trans clearing bit here on the shoulders to reveal some little red chromey tech detail on the inside, which is very nice. And again, some... Nice mold details here, nicely uh, nicely painted and whatnot. And up top, too, you can add that transclearing plastic over the techie details. So very, very cool. Very nice. I love all the, uh, you know, the little detail work here on the plates here. It's got the spikes. It's very, very nice. got nice riveting action right there. It's riveting. <laughs> but uh, you do have <laughs> the rivets going down the tail and whatnot. Just very... Very nicely done. Very, very cool. And he does have the spot right there for a repro label. So it's so just considerate. So nice when they do that. <laughs> They're like, play sticker here, which I will do because I have plenty of Autobot symbols I can stick on that spot right there. So there you have that. So for comparison, we'll just bring in our other Dinobot buddies here. So here is Scoria. Let's see if we can get a nice group shot going here. And we have the official Masterpiece Grimlock. And we'll bring in Soar on his stand right here. And we will pull back and take a look at the team so far. And that looks good. I love it. I am loving it. I am loving it. I'm loving it. When I, I posted this exact picture on Twitter... And uh, somebody said, oh, it needs a bigger Grimlock. I, I don't think it needs a bigger Grimlock. I think this works fine. As far as I'm concerned, I think this works. This works just fine. This looks good, as far as I'm concerned. I love it. I love it. We just need a sludge. That's all we need. We just need a sludge. Let's get these guys out of the way. And, of course, just because, here is G1 Precious, oh, Precious, little G1 Snarl. Aww. So cute. It's like a baby with his papa. Okay, I'm going to stop now. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but, yeah, very, very cool. Now, articulation-wise, um, his head can actually move from side to side. Pretty good range of movement. Um, it can move upward, but then you're kind of breaking his neck. So <laughs> it is possible if you kind of maybe 
keep it at an angle where you can't see his neck being broken, but you know, you do have a little bit of upward movement just due to that transformation hinge. Uh, the mouth is on a ratcheted joint, so you can't open and close his mouth. So, you have that. Uh, the front legs are on a ball joint. Um, not a whole lot of range of movements, but it's there. It is on a ball joint, you know, a little bit of wiggle room. It does have a swivel right here, very tight, uh, very tight swivel, but there is a swivel there. Ugh! He does have a ratcheting joint right here. And he also has movement at the front legs. You can move up, move down. It even has a bit of an ankle tilt, which is nice. They have that. The rear legs are on a nice heavy ratchet. Do a full 360. You get some movement here at the knee. Not a lot, just enough. And the foot again is on this bar. So again, if you move it a little too far, it kind of breaks his ankle. But it's still there. And you also do get some ankle tilt because that is on a ball joint. So you get rotation. You get some tiltage and whatnot. And the tail has two joints. You have one joint right here, and you have one joint right here. So you can get some wiggly waggly action from his tail, so. There you go, so pretty well articulated for being a big stegosaurus. I think it's really as articulated as it needs to be. I mean, it's not like this is gonna be doing any acrobatic ninja poses or anything. It's a stegosaurus, I mean, come on. <laughs> but still, very, very cool. So we'll just get down to transformation, shall we? Let's. So let's get right down to it. So first thing you want to do is you want to close his mouth. Don't leave your mouth open, you'll catch flies. But anyway, and then we are going to move these legs back out of the way. We're going to take this whole front section here and we're going to split it. Split his head. It's nice you get little notches right here. Little notches and notations right here to kind of get your thumb in. So you're going to split the head. You're going to split this whole assembly here. Like that, you want to take this part of the head right here. You see there's a little, little hook section right here. So you just want to take this piece and move it out of the way and just bring that down on this hinge right here. Bring that down and just get all that out of the way right now. Then you're going to take the leg, you're going to bring it down like that. And then you get some cool stuff going on here in the legs. So, you want to take this whole back panel right here, this will open up. You want to bring the dino foot up and you want to swing it into the leg. Now you want to take it and you want to make sure that it's bent in. It's kind of hard to do because it's freaking big. But uh, you basically want the leg bent forward like that. And then you just want to close this back up like that. And again, you want to have that leg bent forward. There's a little, there's a little notch in here for the foot. It doesn't tab in or anything, but just there's a little notch right in here for the foot that it just kind of fits right in. So that's basically where you want that. You want the leg in that configuration. Once you have that done, now you want to bring this assembly down. You want to bring it down on this hinge all the way, and then just kind of take this and actually let me bring this up first. There we go. You want to take the head and just fold it in, that we can get it into this little assembly right here. Then you can bring that hinge down like that, and then just take the head and it'll fit right in that space right there. So that's pretty neat how all that ends up working. And then you want to come to the bottom of the foot, and you want to flip this out and then flip this out like that and then you want to come in here and flip this out and this will hook right over this tab right here like that and that basically just gives him more of a foot more of a solid footprint which is nice very very nicely done so once you've done that you want to rotate the leg right there at the thigh swivel and then you're going to take the leg and slide it in right there and there you go. And there you got a leg all done. Let me raise things up a bit. So, second verse, same as the first. 
unhook that, bring that down, get it out of the way, take this whole section here, and just fold that down, like that, open this panel up, take that leg, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do from behind the camera. It's a lot easier when you have this thing, you know, sitting on your lap. Instead of trying to do it kind of at arm's length here. But again, you want to rotate that leg in and just bend the leg thusly. Like that. Close that back up. Like that. And again, you just want to make use of those joints and just put the little foot right there in that little notch that's made for it. And then just bring that up. Bring that into that cavity. Let's bring all this down. Bring that up and whoop. And it fits in right there. Then you come down there. Flip out that piece. Flip out this piece. Flip out that piece. Hook it on. And there you go. And then again, you just want to rotate the leg right here at the thigh swivel. And then slide the hip in. Like that to finish off the leg and there you got your legs all done once you've done that you're gonna take the whole waist rotate it 180 nice clickety clackety ratchet joint there and now we have to bring the camera upwards because he's gonna get tall and he's blinding you with his shininess I love gold I had to say it you know I did don't lie to yourself, don't lie to yourself, and don't lie to me. You know I had to say it. Okay. <laughs> wow, that glare is this. Jeez, man. So now, uh, should we do the arms first? Oh, we'll do the arms first. Okay, for the arms, just going to bring that down, straighten that out, and you're going to come back here, open up this panel, flip out the hand, like that. And then you want to come back here and you want to open up these panels right here. Uh, maybe I should, should have left the hand where it was. Oh, let me leave, leave the hand there for a second. You want to open up these little panels right here. They're actually like, they're hooked together pretty much. And they do tab in quite securely. There we go. Come on. Like that. And you can see that there's a little hook right there that just hooks right into this slot right there. So you just want to open that up. And then you want to take these pieces and you want to rotate them down. Like that. Rotate that down. Like so. At this point you can rotate the arm at the bicep swivel right there. And then you can take the dyno foot, bring it up and back. And that will rest right up against the back of the forearm. Then you can come in here, flip the hand out, close that back up, and then close this back up. You want to close this one first, the section that has the slot, and then bring the other section over it, and that will hook in right there, and that finishes off the forearm. So, there you have an arm all done. Second verse, second verse, the first. Open this up. I'm going to do this first. Yeah, the only thing really is that, you know, this is a little tight. <laughs> Hopefully this will be a little looser in the final version, but other than that, there we go. Open this up. And again, you're going to take this, rotate it downwards, rotate downwards, rotate at the bicep swivel. Open up that panel, take this, bring it to the back, flip out the hand, like so. Close that up, close that up, close that up over it. That will tab in nice and secure. And there you have his other arm done. So now we're going to deal with the uh, the, 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 the butt head right now, because the old best way it is. <laughs> so what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this back piece right here. You're going to untab all this. Like that, you just want to raise it up, you'll see it just kind of tabs in right there, and there's a 
a post right there that just plugs in right in there. Just want to raise that up, get that out of the way, and then you're going to split this back section here like that, which brings everything out, as you can see. And then once you've done that, you want to take the tail and just kind of bring this down and out of the way for now. You're going to raise this whole section up like that. Open this up. Flip out the head. Like that. Close that back up. Then we kind of bring this back over because, again, we need things kind of out of the way here. You want to take... These red, these red portions right here, you're going to take them and you're going to fold them inward. Oops. What was that? <laughs> there was still some little styrofoam in there. I'm like, what just flew off? There was a lot of styrofoam on this guy. <laughs> and it's still showing its, rearing its ugly head. So you just want to take, again, take these side panels here and just flip them inward like that. And once you've done that, you want to take the tail, split it, bring it out to the sides like that, raise them up on these armatures right here. It's a nice heavy ratchet joint. So you just want to bring it up like that. You want to take this panel right here, you want to bend it in at this joint like that. And this is on a tight joint right there. So you want to fold that in like that, take this and fold that in like that and you just want to close the whole thing back up and those panels will go just right into that gap in the back there like so and now you want to bring the tail back down you see now it has a groove for it to sit in and that will lock all that in place now just bring that down as you can see now it locks all that in place and then you just bring this down across the back. Oops. Did I miss a click? I did miss a click. There we go. Make sure that comes all the way down. And then just bring that against the back like that. And just take this top panel here. Just fold it down like that. And I think we're done. Are we done? I believe we're done. Yes, we're done! Woo! I'm tired. <laughs> But there you go. There you have Sever in his robot mode. And me likes, me likes, me likes very, very much. He's a very, very cool figure. I dig this guy. I really, really do. Getting close here on the head sculpt. Very nice head sculpt. Very cool. Um, he does have the removable face. He will have the face swap gimmick. Again, I didn't get those parts uh, sent to me with this test shot. But, um... He does have the removable face with the removable eyepieces and whatnot. So um, he will come with uh, a second face as well as a uh, red piece to give him red eyes. So again, I, I wasn't sent those I wasn't sent those parts, but um, they will be included in the final release. So he will totally have the face swap gimmick like uh, like Scoria did. But that is the standard face he comes with, and I like that just fine. I'm assuming the other face is going to be like a Aah! like a screaming face like Scoria had, but um, yeah, still very cool head sculpt. Again, lots of nice molded detail. Again, nice spot picked out right there for an Autobot symbol. So considerate, and you got that little transclear and plastic right here with some techie detail behind it, and very very cool. I just I dig this. I dig this very much. I dig how all this transforms. It makes the leg. Just nice and solid and smooth. I, I really, really dig that. It is a very, very clean transformation. And uh, just looks really, really nice. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now, articulation-wise, this head um, can rotate. You can do a full 360. A little squeaky on mine. You can look up. You can look down. There's no wiggle room. It's not a ball joint, but you can look up, look down. Rotate the arms. On a nice heavy ratchet joint right there. Also ratcheting outward movement. You do get bicep swivel. You do get 90 degrees of movement at the elbow. You do get a wrist swivel. Um, the hands are fully posable. 
I don't mind they're really really tight <laughs> but again you have your uh, you have your thumb all the ball joint right there so you get a nice range of movement and you get two joints at each finger so there you have that uh, you do have your clickety clackety waist joints uh, legs can go yeah, forward they can go back again nice heavy ratchet in and out and as you can see all of these skirt pieces will move out of the way to accommodate the movement you do have your thigh swivel you do have 90 degrees of bend there at the knee uh, the feet can move up and down you can see pretty good you know pretty good range they can move up and down and you do get some nice ankle tilters there and again just the way this foot transforms gives it a lot more of a solid base it gives them a lot more of a solid footprint there so that's really clever how they figured that out and uh there you go and of course the uh the tail parts here since they're still on those joints you can kind of take them and angle them how you wish totally up to you you can make use of those joints however you wish but obviously it's just supposed to be you know kind of sticking straight out like that and there you go. Very, very cool. Now he does come with weapons. He comes with his sword, which is very reminiscent of his uh, G1 sword. I happen to have it right here. You can see the way the blade is shaped right there. It does have the light up feature. Um, the, <laughs> the batteries died. I actually transplanted the batteries from Scoria into this one. They were working last night, but it seems like they have officially died. But it does have the button right there. And the sword does light up as the others have. Um, just unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> the batteries died. <laughs> but, it, you know. The sword does light up. And you also get his gun, which again, very reminiscent of his G1 gun. I have it right here. So there you go. With some nice little paint out, so you do get some silver here, a little bit of red. Now the batteries in this one do work. So you push it and you get the little pew, 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 pew action. So there you have that. And of course he can hold his weapons. Um, one issue uh, is is with the weapons. Um, the sword is, is quite loose in his hands. And uh, the gun is actually a little too tight fitting into the slot, so <laughs> maybe that's uh, some of the issues they were talking about when I got the email, but it's not the end of the world. He can, you can get him to hold it, but again, I'm sure it will work way, way better in the, uh, the final version, because keep in mind, this is a test shot. And again, you know, as the slot's on either side, so you can hold it in either hand. I mean, the, uh, the tab's on either side, rather, and he has the slots inside the palm of his hand and you just take it you work it in there now again this is like way too loose it doesn't tab in nearly securely but once you get it in there and just wrap his fingers around it he holds on to it just fine but again remember this is a test shot so yours will not have that issue so you can hold the sword then you can get him holding his gun it's better if you kind of already have his fingers kind of pointed inward like that And then you just get this and just get it in there. Yeah, like this is actually a little too tight where it actually kind of pushes itself out. But once you get the fingers wrapped around it again, he holds it just fine. So there you go. Got him holding his weapons. And he's good to go. But yeah, very cool figure. I, I really dig this guy. Really, really do. Now for comparison. Alright, let's bring in his other Dinobot buddies here. Here we have Scoria. <laughs> let's see how we're going to make this work. Here we have Scoria. Here is Soar. And here is the official Masterpiece Grimlock with the uh, Scoria booties. And, uh, oh. Trying to get them all in frame here. There we go. There we go. I think we got it. I think we got it. There we go. So there we got all of our Dinobots, official and not official, all together. And that looks good. That really, that works for me. <laughs> I'm digging it. I'm digging it very, very much. Very, very cool.
cool Dinobot team we got going on here. I likes it. I likes it very much. Let me just move this guy out of the way first. Get him out of the way. Let's do some direct comparisons here so you can get a better sense. So here he is just, just with uh, Scoria right there. And here he is just with Grimlock. And I don't know if that's proper scale. I don't know if uh, Slag is, I mean not Slag, if uh, Snow is supposed to be taller than Grimlock. I don't know. But even with the booties, still, it helps. And there he is just with Soar. So you can see how they look together. So there you go. There he is with Quake Wave. So you can see how they look together. The other fans toys must the piece. And let's bring in some other official masterpieces. Here he is with Soundwave. That's how he scales with Soundwave. Here's how he scales with Sideswipe. And of course Prowl and Wheeljack are the same height, so. That's how he scales with those guys. Here he is with MP10 Prime. Let's see how he looks with him. And here he is with Magnus! There he is with Ultra Magnus. So there you have that. And just for the heck of it, where is he? Oh, he's over here. Just for the heck of it, here he is with uh, Suminus. Since I just reviewed him. There he is with Suminus. There you go. And of course, just because here he is with the G1 Pressure! So, so precious! Air G1 Slag. I mean, Snarl. I keep wanting to say Slag. Snarl! I mean, Snarl! It's Snarl. Snarl. So, there you go. So, there you have it. There you have Fans Toys Sever. Very, very cool figure. I love it. You know, I I am a Fans Toys fan boy. I, I really am. I love what these guys do. They know what they're doing. Um, I know people will probably ask the question, well, do you like this or Giga Powers uh, gutter better? Um, uh, Giga Powers uh, gutter is a perfectly fine toy. Um, it does. It looks great. But I think they're kind of missing the mark of what masterpiece is um because the the masterpiece aesthetic is make it look like the animation model what giga power is doing is it doesn't look like the animation model it just looks like they just blew up the g1 toy and uh you know th they're more about let's make really big dinobots and they're just kind of upgrading uh you know kind of blowing up the the g1 toy what Fans Toys is doing is they're sticking to the Masterpiece aesthetic, which is make it look like the animation model from the G1 cartoon. And this does. You can see how the legs are clean. You know, the G1 toy obviously has the the uh, the dino legs just kind of sticking out the back and the head flipping out uh, right there. And Gunner is basically doing that same thing. Um, so I, I like Fans Toys better because they get what the uh, Masterpiece aesthetic is. And this fits with your Masterpiece toys, especially with your Masterpiece Grimlock. It does fit. Granted, Grimlock needs the little booties to make him a little taller, but that's all you need. Uh, Giga Power is basically saying, uh, yeah, you can put him with your Masterpiece figures, but you're going to have to buy our Grimlock so they all match. This is already made to match your Masterpiece Grimlock, so... I think Fans Toys gets the idea a bit more than Giga Power does, um, but again, it's up to your own personal preference, your own personal taste. Me, I speak only for myself, I like Fans Toys version a lot better because they get what the Masterpiece aesthetic is, and that's what I want on my shelf. Um, 
you know, like I said, Giga Powers, what they're doing is, it looks great. It looks like a perfectly good figure. I'm not knocking it in any way. It looks tremendous, but they're kind of missing the mark as far as this is meant to go with your masterpieces. Um, you know, and uh, as far as what I want for my masterpiece shelf, I am going fans toys all the way because, like I said, they get it. They get what the masterpiece aesthetic is. And, um, you know, um, I had another point I was going to make, and it totally slipped my mind. My God, I'm slipping in my old age. <laughs> that was my brain saying, shut up already and wrap this up. Oh, yeah, Fans Toys, uh, what they have coming down the pipeline, they are going to be making a Masterpiece-styled Perceptor, they're going to be making a Masterpiece-styled uh, Reflector, and they're going to be making a Masterpiece-styled uh, Bombshell, so we're going to get some Insecticons from uh, Fans Toys, so that's awesome, really cool stuff coming down the pipeline from Fans Toys. Like I said, I dig these guys, these guys know what they're doing, they make some really good Truly masterpiece styled robots, and I'm with these guys all the way, man. I, I support them 110%. A big thank you to Fans Toys for hooking me up with this uh, review sample. Thank you very much. You guys rock! I love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys rock. And if you would like to own a sever of your own, you can always go to BigBadToyStore.com. Come and pre-order yours today. And if you're watching this in the future, then you can go to BigBadToyStore.com and order yours today. There will be a link in the description down below. And that's pretty much it. So don't forget to check out M Games. Check out Lori Plan. Follow me on Twitter. All of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So there is the Fans Toys Sever. And this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek. Be proud. Pour me in your face. Cesium salami. Merlion Maloney. Cesium salami. Merlion Maloney. Guys, guys. What are we arguing for? Eat personal. Yeah, shut up. <sighs> Me, Snarl, not know what to do about you guys. Hey! Me, Snarl, definitely not know what to do about you.